Hey, good afternoon, Jason here, uh, coming at you from Birchfield Family Farm here today, making some maple syrup, got the evaporator fired up. I wanted to show you guys our new reverse osmosis maple syrup machine. We just got this guy going here a couple days ago. I've been using it, it's, it's homemade, DIY. I'm gonna go over this entire thing with you guys, but I wanted to give you some stats up front. I don't see a lot of stats on these videos for these osmosis machines, and I wanna give stats. Where does the rubber meet the road? This is sap over here. This hydrometer. Let's see there, we're sitting about two and a half. Between two and a half and three. And that is uh, that is raw sap. So we've got this thing pumping out of the sap bucket through the system, all the way through in series. Coming out, it's dumping permeate water over there because we've already filled up a bucket. And then the other line, and I'll show you guys all this up close. The other line is draining into here. This is our pre-warmer. That pre-warmer drains right into our evaporator pan. Let's see what this thing is putting out here. Look at that. Six and a half, between six and a half and seven. So as far as raw numbers go, we ran 66 gallons of sap. So 66 gallons through there. Pumped it through the RO. And then we ended up with a full pot here. Now this is a 100 quart, 25 gallon. So we turned 66 gallons into 25 gallons of sap in one pass. One pass over those four filters. We're moving uh, sap through the RO about 10 gallons per hour. So 10 gallons per hour, and then we do another eight to 10 gallons per hour on the evaporator. So when we have both going, we're we're cooking with gas here, about 20 gallons an hour. They call the water permeate, um, the, the purified water. So we're collecting what this thing sends off um, out the junk side. So normally in RO, you'd, you'd, you're making purified water and you'd keep the purified water, it's called permeate. And then the stuff that uh, you don't want is flushed out. Um, but in this case, that's what we do want. It's filtering out our sugar in our minerals because these filters are so fine. Let's go over this thing in detail and I'm gonna put some links down below on all this stuff I go over. Um, and I'll tell you why we're running this the way we are. Okay, so again, here's where we start. We have kind of a weight down there, just a hose fitting on this to hold that line in the bottom. I like, I found that if we elevate the bucket a little, the pump seems to do a little bit better. Basically, we're coming out of this bucket we're coming into this pump, get around here. And this pump is a Aquatec 8800 transformer here. I think it's a 24 volt, so you're gonna need the transformer. I just, I clamp down a, a switch here. You can turn this thing off and on real easy. Not very loud. And then of course we've got power coming in on an extension cord here. So that's all power in the pump. We're running two from the pump to a pre-filter. Okay, and uh, this thing gets a little messy back here because you, you bleed the air off initially. And uh, five micron filter in here. Again, I'll link to all this stuff. Pressure gauge. You can see we're running right at about 100 PSI. And then on these RO filters, you can run these in parallel or you can run them in series. And so people that want to recirculate, you'll run them all going in the top and then out the bottom, and then you'll continue to recirculate and get your, rid of your water that way. This line here is coming in from that pre-filter, that five micron pre-filter, in through the top, out through the bottom. This line here is our permeate. So that's our, our permeate line, and those all tie together and go out there, right out there where Sawyer is, you can see the water that's really, really purified water. I should probably be collecting that for something, but we have what we need to clean the filters at the end, so it is what it is right now. 
but I take the sap side. So this is putting out our, our crud water here normally, but that's actually our sap. Run it in through the next one and then all the way down. When you get to the end, we're going to have the sap line, a needle valve on the sap line, and that lets you really adjust that pressure. So the more kind of I turn that up and down, you're gonna see the pressure bounce around, but then you're also gonna see different flow rates out of these two hoses. And I try and get these hoses right about the same flow rate. And so you can see that flowing into our pre-warmer here. And um, you know, then we've got it flowing in about the same rate as we're evaporating out. So, um, you know, I would say between three and 400 bucks is uh, what I got in this cost wise. Um, you can buy pre-made systems. Um, I don't have any experience with that. I just, I wanted to put this together because I wanted to understand how it works. And, um, you know, the other thing I will say too, the, the folks that are recirculating, a couple thoughts on that. Um, number one, you've got to have a heated shop. It can't, it can't, this thing can't freeze. So that was my main concern, my main motivation for doing it in series. I just, I want to pass this through one time and be done. And my goal was to cut my boil time in half. So I want to, I want to cut in half, at least cut in half the amount of firewood I'm using. So, and we've certainly been able to do that. Like I say, we went from 66 gallons down to 25 there. Uh, so we cut out about 62%, uh, which means we're only using, you know, 38% of the wood that we were using last year, which is absolutely amazing. Um, huge difference. And so that pays for itself in no time. Um, so if you're gonna recirculate these, you really need a heated space to do that. And I kind of, I've made this thing out of wood and I wanted a handle here so I can take this thing inside when we're done every day. I just uh, pop hoses off, take it in so that it does not freeze. When we're done every day as well, I'll take five gallons of permeate or the clean water and I'll put that in here and pump that through the system just to clean uh, everything. And then we start it all again the next day. So uh, seems to be working out here. Again, I will link to the pump. Uh, I'll link to the pre-filter and the filters. I'll link to these RO filters. And um, hopefully that gives you a good start. If you have questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get to you guys. It's a busy season, but um, one that uh, we really love. So one of the questions I had at first is, uh, if this thing works so well, you know, why not just continue to run this, make a few more passes and just get really, really close to maple syrup with the RO? Why even use hardly any wood at all? And uh, that's a really good question and it's pretty tempting. But the answer I'm discovering is with maple syrup, you, you want that sap, that syrup to start to brown up. And um, the way that that browns is through a caramelization process here on the evaporator. And so in my mind, um, if you continue to do RO, you're gonna make a very, very light colored syrup and you're gonna, you're gonna impact the flavor. Uh, this is my opinion, um, my, my thought process here. So, you know, I'm willing to do some of this, but I, I also, I want that caramelization that occurs uh, through the boiling process as well. So for us here, you know, it becomes a balance. You know, I'm not knocking anyone that, that continues just to, to RO uh, this stuff until it's about done. You know, I, I guess, you know, we all do what works for our, our farms, but um, I, you know, I want, some, I want some color, I want some flavor to this stuff. And uh, really the way, the way that we're gonna get that is through that caramelization. One of the other things that we were sure to do in the beginning too is to take this permeate uh, line. Again, this is the clean water that's it's filtering out. And um, we wanna put our hydrometer 
in there, uh, fill a test cup up with this clean water. And then we wanna just test with that sap hydrometer just to make sure that we don't, we're not pushing any, any sap through uh, the filters. And that kind of has to do with that needle valve as well. And so getting that setting right where you've got about half and half, um, you know, coming out of the lines uh, at the end uh, seemed to be about right for us, right about that 90 to 100 PSI range on the pressure gauge. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.